Today I'm going to show you how to swap out heads in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode it's super cool and it's actually really long overdue. Basically what we're going to be doing is showing you guys how to swap heads from one photograph to another one. Well, why would you want to do this? Oftentimes you're going to be in taking like a, a group photo, like a, let's say a family portrait, and one person in the family is maybe making like a weird face, they're squinting or they got their tongue out or something like that in a photo, and you don't want it to ruin the entire photo, maybe you just want to swap their head out with a different photo that you took that they were actually making a nice face in. So it's something that's super common. You're probably going to be doing it on a lot of like group and family type photos uh, for you like wedding photographers out there. Anyone who's taken like a big group shot and people are like, I don't like it. My face looks weird. You can swap out their head. So we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to show you how to choose different photos that you're going to need for head swapping. We're going to show you guys how you can use layer masks to actually make those heads look like they would be in the right place. And then we're going to show you how to match exposure and brightness to make sure that they look perfect. Cool, let's get into our episode. So here's our two families. We have uh, two random Caucasian families from <laughs> Photolia.com, an awesome stock website. I don't know these people, but I was like, oh, this is perfect for today's episode. So here's our family, uh, picture number one, and uh, this is the head we're going to replace. This is, we'll call her Cindy for this episode. I, I don't know her real name. Again, I have no idea who these people are. But here's a better, uh, a better picture of Cindy. So first thing we need to do, let, we've got our two photos. We're gonna use our move tool. And when I'm going to hold the shift key and click and drag from one image down to another one. So we basically got them on the same document now. Okay, let's go ahead and close out our other, the document we don't need and hit F to full screen this document. Okay, perfect. So what we're looking is to replace Cindy's head. And although she's, you know, I think that's a relatively cute face. Maybe her family's like, I want the one with her mouth closed. That, that fits everyone else a little bit better. All right, so the first thing we need to do is basically create a copy of this area and put it onto a new layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the marquee tool. So we're going to go up here. We're going to choose the rectangular marquee tool. And then I'm just going to basically make a section right around Cindy's head. And um, I would recommend making it a little bit larger. That's going to give you a little bit more room to play with when we start layer masking. So make a selection around the person's head. And then here on this layer, just hit Control or Command J. And that's going to duplicate whatever's in that selection to a new layer. OK, so now we basically have Cindy. Let's use our move tool and we can see we have what was in that selection is now on its own layer. We can turn that off and on. So that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and make our layer one invisible. And now it's time to put her in the right place, making sure she's in the right size and everything. OK, so basically we want to lower the opacity because right now I, I can't really see what I'm doing. Um, you can have fun with this, by the way. If you wanted to make her face bigger and put it over mom, you could do that too. So let's go ahead and lower the opacity. I'm just going to go to my opacity slider here and click and drag to the left. Let's hit Command Plus a couple times to zoom in. And now, using my Move tool, I'm going to place one face. We're going to place one face over another. And I'm going to try to size it as well. You can see her eyes in this image are a little bit larger than the eyes in the underlying image, right? So we're going to hit Command T. That's going to bring up our transform. And then I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit to try to match the size of the eyes. There we go. That, that'll be a pretty good indicator on how large or small a person's uh, face is, uh, their eye size. That's not going to change. All right, so that looks perfect. And now we're going to put the image right about there over top of the other version of Cindy. So there we have our two versions. Now you can see it's not perfect yet. First thing we need to do, let's bring our opacity back up to 100. OK, and next we need to load a layer mask onto this layer. So to get to our layer mask, just click on this triangle. <laughs> it's not a triangle. It's a rectangle with a circle in it. And that's basically going to let us define what's going to be visible and not visible in this image. So zooming in, I'm just going to basically use my brush tool. Let's zoom back out, actually. We're going to use our brush tool, and I'm going to paint black over the areas that I don't want this layer to be visible. And that's pretty much everywhere except for her face. Now, when you're doing this, the hardest thing you're going to come across is basically where do you stop? Where do you stop with this layer and where do you begin with the next layer? For instance, if I go up too far, I'm going to start to see her other face and we really don't want that, right? So let's just make sure we're painting white in this area. My general rule is this, include as much of the original photo as you can and only replace the areas that actually need replacing. 
So in this case, we can see it's really just her face that's, that we're replacing here. All right, there we go. We're even going to try to bring in her hair from the original. And if it looks kind of weird, look, in this case it kind of does because you can see her ear and things like that. We're just going to kind of bring this in as well. All right, so it's going to be definite balance between, you know, trying to find what looks right with the original one and uh, what's going to look good with your replacement. So you want to find something that's going to be really, really close. There we go. And that's starting to look pretty good. All right, so if I zoom out, we don't see a whole lot of a difference there. Everything looks pretty natural. Let's just move this over just a little bit to the right. All right, and we're going to paint black on our layer mask just to make sure everything looks good. Now, we do have one area that is kind of like um, we need to take special attention to. And this is always going to happen when you're replacing a head. Not always, but a lot of the time. There's going to be one area where you can't make it work with layer masks alone. So like this area, for instance, right to the right of her head. So if I paint black on my layer mask here, it works until right about there. And then we start seeing like an ear or something like that. Okay. And if I paint white on this area, we're basically just seeing a, a little bit of hair. So what we want to do a lot of the time you can go over top of this layer and with something like a clone stamp tool, you can make up the difference. So let's turn this off and on. Let's just make sure like, you know, is that the only area we actually need to, you know, need to fix. And I think everything looks good to me except for, yeah, except for that little area, which does require a little bit of fixing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer and I'm going to hit S for the clone stamp tool. And now I'm just going to clone stamp here right on the white shirt. And we're going to clone stamp from the right to the left. And we're just going to cover some of this hair up. There we go. And luckily here, we're, we've got light hair uh, right next to a light shirt. So it, it makes our job a lot easier. All right. And that's really going to be case by case. Uh, it's going to vary uh, for different photos. Sometimes this is going to be easy. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit difficult, depending on the face the person's making and the direction they're looking and if the camera was on a tripod or not. But I think we're doing a great job. So let's go ahead and zoom out. We can look at our before and our after. You know what? On this layer, we also need to extend the shirt down a little bit too, don't we? There we go. Perfect. So there's our before and our after. Now, one thing I did notice with the new face, it's just a little bit darker than our old face, right? It's a little bit darker. And you know what? The new face needs to be a little bit larger as well. There we go. So this compared to the, the original face, we're going to need to make a little bit lighter. So the best way to do that is we're going to grab above everything else. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. So we're going to go to our adjustment layer. We're going to go to curves. And then I'm going to click right here in the middle and just drag this up just a little bit. That's going to make everything brighter. Now on our layer mask here, I'm going to hit command. <laughs> I'm going to hit command or control I. All right, command or control I. It's going to invert that layer mask, and then we're just going to paint white on the layer mask of the curves, curves adjustment layer over top of where her head is. There we go, and that's going to just lighten this area of the photo, which should make it match our original. So we've got a couple of steps. We've got a replacement of the photo, okay, and that's done with layer masking. We've got some clone stamp to hide any areas where the transitions weren't perfect, and then we're matching the exposure using some curves. So let's go ahead and group the three of those. Hit Command or Control G, all right? And we're just going to call this Head Swap. All right, perfect. Let's take a look at the before and the after. So here's our before photo, and here's our after. All right, guys, that's it for swapping heads in Photoshop. Just remember, there are a couple key points. First, make sure the images are taken about at the same time. It's going to be a lot harder if you're trying to replace someone with a picture of them during the day and different picture of them at night. So the closer those are together and in the same setting, that's better. And if you can shoot on a tripod, that's even better. Next, cut your subject out using a marquee selection tool and place them over top of your new subject, lower your opacity, and then use a layer mask to get them in place. And if you need to, use something like the clone stamp tool to cover up any areas that don't exactly match perfectly. And if you need to change your exposure, making things a little bit brighter or darker, just use a curves adjustment layer and that's gonna do the trick. All right guys, thanks so much for watching today's episode. And the next time you're at a holiday party and you've got a couple pictures and someone says, I don't like my face, just say, I know how to fix it because I learned how on flern.com. I'll just swap it out 
with a new one. If you guys like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's super simple. Just put a link on the screen and you can click it and then you get free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And if you have an idea or a question about today's episode, leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much guys and I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. And that's all there is to swapping heads in a Photoshop. Just, all right guys, that's all there is to swapping heads in a, that's gonna mean the camera doesn't move making swap. Thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to hustle. Whew, you can do it. <laughs>